Welcome to the Rise Method podcast, where we make fitness information available to everyone. I'm Steve. Let's jump in. Humans are pretty cool in that we adapt to stresses that apply to our body. You know, that's how we get really hardened people, where they've gone through stressful periods of their life and they become, you know, hard and strong and they're resilient to other stresses in their life, where once upon a time, the biggest stress of their life was an alarm going off to go to school on time and fast forward 10 years later and the biggest stresses of their life are managing their kids and their work and adult stresses. So we become better adapted to stresses. And this is essentially what we're trying to do with training. We're applying a stress on the body and that stress is tension, it's force being placed on the structures of our body, like our bones and our ligaments and our tendons and of course, our muscles. And we are trying to repeat that stressor over time so that our body adapts to it, so that it becomes normalized to that stressor. We build the infrastructure so that we go, yep, we're ready to take on those stresses so that our muscles get bigger and stronger and those stresses become easy. Think of it like a car in traffic, okay? Imagine like you've just moved to a new estate, it's just been built and there is just one road in and out of that new estate. And as more and more houses pop up into that estate, that road gets to a point where it's too much stress on that road, it's traffic. Everything gets backed up, the road might not work, the cars are starting and stopping, so, you know, potholes are being created and all this thing, and, you know, it's not a great time. Then the road expands, and we get a highway, and it gets bigger, so we adapt to that stressor, and then now all these new cars coming in and out is manageable, it's easy, it's easy until the estate gets bigger and bigger, and then we need bigger roads, and so on and so forth. And that's essentially what's happening in our bodies. The stresses that we apply on the body, I don't know, five kilos of tension going through the bicep when we do a bicep curl. At the start, they might be hard and challenging, a lot of tension on the biceps and the elbow joint and the shoulder joint and the whole arm and the whole system of our body, the nerves and the the blood vessels and the oxygen supply around the body and all the nutrients that goes into creating that action. It's really hard for it to do. Then it becomes easy. We adapt to it, okay, five kilos, it's fine. And then we're ready to move up into the six kilo, seven kilo, and so on. So that's the name of training. That's the the name of the game when we are trying to train, we are slowly progressing load. And there's a few ways that we can progress load. And that is that we are adding more volume, more volume meaning just more work. We could do that through more reps of the same weight or adding more sets of exercise. Or we increase the total load that's being applied. And that is the load on the bar. And it gets tricky because sometimes the load on the bar, it's a little bit different. So if I was to go and bench press 40 kilos versus 60 kilos versus 80 kilos versus 100 kilos, that's different types of technique required, different types of load, different types of bar path, and different types of setup to be able to do those types of activities. So sometimes each weight is a little bit different in the skill that it requires to do, some of the nervous system stresses that's being applied to it. And of course, it's just different weights, so it moves differently and such. Okay, so let's talk about one way that isn't helpful to try to build muscle and then try to progress that muscle building activity. And that is to drastically modify our rest period in between sets. So the time that you rest doesn't really influence your ability to build muscle. Okay, so the time that you rest is a way for you to replenish your nutrient supply, replenish some fancy physiological pathways so that you're ready to lift another another round of of weights, Uh, and then so that you are mentally and physically ready to do another set. If you are choosing to reduce your rest time, that is not a way to progress the stimulus to build muscle. So a reduction in the rest time in between sets is not a way to increase the stimulus or increase the stressor to add more load and tension to muscles and bones and ligaments that stimulates muscle growth. Reducing rest time is a great way to challenge our cardiovascular system, you know, blood flow around the body, oxygen flow around the body, our respiratory system, our lungs and our breathing, great way to train our cardiovascular system. But the cardiovascular system is kind of a separate beast to what we're trying to do when we're trying to build muscle. When we're trying to build muscle, make our bodies more robust and strong and being able to handle more 
mechanical tension applied to it. So the question, of course, is how long should we rest for? And I face this question frequently with different folks who are maybe a little bit more, quote, older school where we want to do things very quickly, (laughs) where, okay, I'm going to the gym and I want to focus on getting sweaty. I'm trying to feel the burn while I'm I'm, I'm training and that burn comes from feeling hot, uh, melting fat away where I'm trying to get that sweaty response or I'm trying to get tired. So a really great way to get feel as tired and fatiguedness on setting is if I was to do more. So, okay, I'm doing a, a set of bench press and then I'm waiting 30 seconds. I'm going to do another set because, well, why am I waiting? I can do another one. I can get tired. I get sore really quickly. But we can start to scratch our head and go, well, is it really the same, same stimulus? So use, let's say, the bench press as an example. If I was to train and apply an effective stimulus to build my chest, my shoulders, my arms through the bench press, I want to be training to a point where I'm getting close to failure, where the weight starts to slow down, it's getting harder for me to get those reps out, and I would I would stop my set maybe one rep or two reps shy of, of absolutely failing and, and getting crushed by the weight. So if I train to that level where I've, I've put a big stimulus and a big stress on my body, I'm pretty knackered, right? I should be feeling some tiredness in the target muscle, so like my pecs, right? So that should be feeling tired and sore, but maybe a bit tender to touch, and I might not be able to like contract my pec in the same way. Maybe a few seconds after I rack the weight, I might not be able to feel that. My accessory muscles to the bench press, so like my shoulders, my elbows, meaning like my, my deltoids and my triceps, might be a bit sore and tender because they're helping with the bench press. And then also with the bench press, you know, depending how you set it up, you might uh, be using your back a little bit because you've got a bit of an arch, maybe your legs a little bit because you've got a bit of a leg drive. Uh, maybe you might be squeezing a bit of your, like, your neck muscles while you're training. So some of these muscles might be sore and tender straight after the set as well. Next, I might be simply out of breath. So I've just finished my set of, let's say, 10 reps uh, on my bench press. After I've racked the weight, I might be out of breath. I might be like, whew, geez, that was really hard. So I might take a few minutes just to kind of catch my breath again. And finally, what might slow me down is I might be, I might sit up from the bench and I'm looking at that weight and I'm like, man, nah, I'm not, I'm not ready for that again. That was, that was really hard, really painful. Uh, I, I didn't like that. I'm, I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yet. And that's kind of like this like mental cognitive side of things where I'm just, I don't have the fire in my belly yet to go and train. So when we rest, we should wait for those four tick boxes to be ready to train. So if we go through it again, once I finish my breath, my bench press, after I finish my bicep curl, after I finish my squat, whatever exercise it is, when you rest, shouldn't be dictated by a timer. You shouldn't finish your set and then look at the timer and go, okay, tap your foot and wait, you know, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 90 seconds, whatever it is. You should be resting and waiting until these, you can confidently tick off these four boxes. So number one, the target muscle should be ready. So maybe a different example with the bicep curl. Once you've completed your bicep curl, the set, you should not do another set of bicep curls until the bicep muscle is ready for another set. So you might be, you know, moving your elbow and go, oh yeah, I still feel like tiredness in my bicep. I don't know, you poke your bicep, like, oh yeah, it still feels a bit tender and sore. You should wait until the bicep is ready for another set. Next, think about the muscles that are accessory muscles to that lift. So a bicep curl, you might feel a little bit in your wrist or your forearm. Sometimes when you're doing bicep curls, you feel like a bit of a forearm pump happening. You might feel it in your shoulders a little bit. Or maybe when you're standing up, you might feel it in your like abs because you're standing up and it's, it's kind of, you're contracting your abs a little bit when you're doing a bicep curl. So you might need to wait until those other accessory muscles are ready. And a really good example is when you do squats. Sometimes when you're doing like back squats, you might uh, complete the set and your like, quads are ready to go. You're like, oh yeah, I feel good. But you kind of feel a little bit of tightness in like the, the lower back muscles. And you're like, oh yeah, like those, it's called the erector spinae, the muscles. Oh yeah, they're, they're, they're feeling a bit tight. So I'm just going to kind of like wait a minute until they're ready for another set. Next, you should wait until your cardiovascular system is ready. So when you've got your breath back. Uh, you know, bicep curl, you might do bicep curls, you don't really feel out of breath. But you might do a set of squats instead of squats for... 10 reps and you know you're pretty out of breath it's like you've just really gone for a run so you might have to wait a moment until uh you get your breath back 
And then finally, you should wait until the, the, the fire in your belly comes back where you go, oh, yeah, okay, I'm ready to tackle that. I'm ready to smash that. I'm ready to, to kind of go to, go to quote, battle with that weight again. Because sometimes, you know, you've got like a heavy load. You feel the compression of the weight on your back when you're squatting or the, 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 the weight on the bar. And you're like, okay, I'm, I just need to wait a minute. I just need to wait a minute, man. Okay, so once you can confidently tick off those four boxes, then you're ready for another set. That could take a minute. That could take 90 seconds. It could take two minutes. It could take three minutes. It could take five minutes. That's okay. We shouldn't be trying to rush lifting weights because if you are starting to shorten the rest period just because you think, okay, I'm, 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 I need to compress my workout. I need to get sweaty. It's going to make it harder for me. What tends to happen is the subsequent sets that you do, so set number two, three, four, five, you end up with a lower stimulus with those sets. So if I just did my set of bench press, 10 reps, and I've trained it to true true failure, where maybe I might have got one more rep if I was lucky, and then I wait 30 seconds and I go to do another set, I might only get like four or five reps out because I'm pretty, pretty tired still. But if I waited one or two minutes, I might be able to get you know eight, nine reps out. So that stimulus is important because <laughs> you know, getting four or five reps versus getting like eight or nine reps, you're just getting more work in by just adding a little bit more rest. And that more work is more stimulus for muscle growth because you don't want the limiting factor to your ability to train be something like, oh, I'm just out of breath or the accessory muscles aren't ready or I'm just mentally not there yet. And if that's your limiting factor to muscle growth, then... Uh, you're not getting that stimulus that you want, you're not getting the development that you want, and you're just not getting the results that you want. The other issue that we face is if you, in your mind, know that, okay, I've got this set, then I've got a 30 second rest, and then I can move on to this set, the next set, you might actually cut the first rep, first set short. So if I was training, I'm doing my bench, I meant to do 10 reps, and I might stop at rep number eight, because I know Okay, in 30 seconds, I'm going to have to do this again. So then instead of getting true failure, where you know, I'm getting like eight, nine, 10 reps, I might stop at number eight being like, oh yeah, I need to uh, conserve my energy here because I've got another set coming very soon. Then you're only tr- ever training at a reduced stimulus as it is. So then each set, instead of being an adequate stimulus for muscle growth, it's now a lesser stimulus for muscle growth that compounded over time just means less growth. So you might be going to the gym and really pushing it, uh, you know, putting effort into it and trying to push hard where you're going, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this thing. I'm going to the gym. I'm going four, five, six days a week. You're putting all the effort in, you're putting the time in, but the actual results that you're getting is diminished because the interset is diminished. You're, you're, you're reducing the actual stimulus of the training session. So if you're sitting there thinking, oh gosh, like, okay, I've got to progress the weights. I've got to progress the weights. And I'm going to do that by just cutting it short. I'm going to try to superset things. I'm going to try to do the, 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 the circuit type stuff to build muscle. And caveat here, circuits are great ways. And we use them in our programs to try to get that pump sensation. We call it a metabolic conditioning thing where we're challenging the cardiovascular system. That's the point of those types of circuits to challenge the cardiovascular system. But if your goal is to build muscle, which if you have body composition goals where you're trying to burn fat and build muscle, build muscle is very important you want to have the rest and not just have rest just to sit there you want to be in a position where you've earned that rest where if you've completed that set you're not excited about doing another set you want to be at that point where you're like oh geez that was that was tough i need a rest i need to wait that minute i need to wait that two minutes heck give me five minutes and i'll 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 be back right so what do you do during that time what do, you do in the, what do you do during that time so that you actually rest? Well, number one, get off the equipment. So you just on a bench press, get off the bench, all right? So just that time to, to get out of that position might be a few seconds there. Next, you want to be in a position where you can record your set. So you might write down on paper or log it into the Rise Method app that you did this amount of weight, this amount of reps. Then you might be in a position where you're... Uh, you know, reviewing your set. So you might mentally replay the set. Okay, 
that was pretty tough. What happened in rep number four? Why did that feel so hard? Or if you filmed yourself, which a really powerful way to progress, you might sit there and review your filming session, okay? So you might, that set might have taken you 45 seconds, 60 seconds to complete. You might review that set and go, okay, yeah, that was, that was good. So there's, a, there's about a minute there. Then you might take a drink. You might stare at the wall for a minute, change the music if you're uh, listening to some music. And then you might be in a position, that might be one, two, three minutes there, you're on to the next set. So the main point of this today is that if you are trying to let time dictate your session and your goals are muscle building, you might be limiting your muscle building potential by looking at that timer, trying to complete your session within a certain rest period where you go, okay, I'm trying to progress. I'm now going to have 45 seconds rest, now 40 seconds rest, now 30 seconds rest, now 20 seconds rest because I'm trying to get that sweaty sensation. I'm trying to uh, make myself feel tired uh, and that might be a way that I can progress my my workouts. And in, in a way, you might be making your workouts easier by reducing the rest in between sets. Hope you enjoyed this episode. I'll catch you in the next one.